Hey, I'm ZSH Plays, and this is Planet Zoo vs. Real Life. We are inside a real red panda habitat, and I'm going to attempt to recreate it exactly in Planet Zoo. The habitat here is actually more complicated than it looks, and it's going to take a lot of building, so let's get started. Now I had this amazing experience in with the red pandas at Yorkshire Wildlife Park here in the UK. What I want to achieve is to get the pandas actually eating on their feeding platform like you saw in the intro. So if you look in the top left, you'll see the real life feeding platform and that is where we're going to begin. Now you can see the feeding platform is made out of logs that have been cut in half. So they've got a flat top uh, with a good surface for the pandas food. So we need to work out how best to build that in Planet Zoo. So we've got this log panel here, which does have a fairly flat top. I'm not really happy with the look of it. It's not the best texture. So I'm gonna try and just replace it with actual logs and just line those up, give us a much more natural uh, look to it. So we'll copy a load of these logs across here. So we end up with much better uh, texture because it's individual logs rather than just the panel. Later on, we'll sort out giving it a flat top. But for now, let's choose which logs we're going to use to create the rest of this part of the climbing frame. So we've got loads of different logs to choose from in Planet Zoo, both in the construction panel and in the habitat panel as well. So we want some fairly thin ones here, not too thin. So we'll go through, find all the different alternatives and get them placed down here. Um, I think this is pretty much the last different type of log that we can use. Uh, let's take a look at them and you can see the one in the middle that the texture is not great uh, the one on the right is way too big so we're going to go with this one this one looks really nice and we'll start putting in the supports for this feeding platform one of the things like i said in the intro that we need to get here is for the habitat to actually work it's no good just building something that looks like the habitat of yorkshire wildlife park i want an actual functioning habitat where the red pandas can do all the things that they were doing in yorkshire wildlife park because we're going to need to put an actual feeding platform on top of this to enable the keepers to um, place food on it <laughs> to get the pandas up there. And we're also gonna need to get the keepers to be able to actually get up to the suspended feeder, which <laughs> is not fun, um, but we will come back and get that sorted later. We're gonna put in a really important part of the Planet Zoo toolkit, which is the Angry Vendor which is a blueprint you can get on the Steam Workshop, uh, which has been painstakingly made so that it is exactly the same size as the guests in Planet Zoo. And that enables us to get this platform at exactly the right height. We'll also spin these logs around in random directions so the texture doesn't repeat across it. It'll make it look much more realistic. We'll get nice sort of burrs and cracks in the wood like you can see there, looking nice. And then the next thing I wanna build is a bamboo feeder which there's quite a few of these scattered across the habitat, including one on this feeding platform where the keepers place fresh bamboo that they actually grow at the park for the pandas to eat. Uh, in the wild, they basically only eat bamboo. Um, at Yorkshire Wildlife Park, they eat um, supplements and sort of the, the kind of pink biscuity looking things that you saw in the intro, uh, which are full of supplements and proteins for them. And then they also have bamboo as well. We don't have that kind of feeder in Planet Zoo, so we're gonna make a custom one using some um, gutter pieces and brackets and things like that so we get it to match exactly the one in Yorkshire Wildlife Park. One of the most fun things to do in Planet Zoo is making things that aren't in the game yourself using little pieces like this. This one's nice and simple, this is about my level. <laughs> so um, I can definitely make this without too much trouble. Um, we'll just put a few of these brackets together and then this gutter piece as well, that'll form the bottom of it. And then we can put some bamboo in it. Now the bamboo in Planet Zoo is like, what, 10 feet tall or something. We don't have any little sprigs of it uh, like the red pandas would have in this feeder here. So again, we'll have to make some ourselves. So I'm gonna use some of the underwater temple plant and just copy and paste that on top of itself a few times, change the angles, and just get something that approximates a, a sprig or two of bamboo poking out the top of the feeder. Time for the supplements. So I mentioned the little pink biscuity things that you saw in the intro. We're gonna make those now using some rope pieces. Uh, we'll just recolor these to the correct color sink these into these boards and then start scattering them around. You'll notice I've replaced the logs that we put in with these planks. I think these are gonna work much better once we've got a feeding platform on top of them. The logs were just too big to use for this platform. It's gonna be a bit out of scale with the little red pandas that are gonna be sitting on it. So I've replaced them with these. We'll scatter this food around. I'm really pleased with how that turned out. Um, and then we're gonna use some of the smallest logs to start putting in the rest of the structure of this feeding platform. 
One of the hardest things I think of doing a recreation is when you've got something really simple like this, a little wooden platform, a few logs holding it up, a bit of uh, bamboo stuck onto it. Um, it's really tough to try and make this look realistic because in Planet Zoo, most of the pieces are really large and it's all geared towards creating enormous, high budget, highly themed zoos. So when you're trying to make something entirely out of uh, logs and wood, it can be really tricky. So a lot of work in terms of adjusting the angles of things, making everything look organic, um, rotating everything to prevent the textures from being the same, and trying to get loads of different logs and wood in there. So we're gonna use this really big log here to be the main log that takes the um, pandas from the little house uh, that they have above this that we'll be building in a minute down to the feeding platform. I think this is an Australian log. It's a nice contrast to the other logs that we've got there. And then speaking of the hut, let's start building that. So we've got the um, main supports for the hut here, just with some more of these logs. And then we're gonna find the smallest wood pieces in the game and build a tiny little hut for the pandas to go into. We'll start by copying across the planks from the feeding platform to form the base of the hut. Um, in the real habitat, this hut was a little smaller than the feeding platform, but we're going to build it basically the same size because we're going to struggle with pieces this small in Planet Zoo. And then we'll start decorating it and turning it into a cute little hut for the pandas. So we're using the smallest logs here to detail the sides of the platform. And then we'll bring in some larger logs for the other side. And you've probably seen enough logs by now. So let's jump on to building the sides of the habitat and some of the more intricate parts of it. Yeah, I guess these are logs as well. <laughs> Sorry about that, but we're gonna um, copy these logs and then angle them so that they come outwards like the, um, the hut in real life. Uh, we'll copy these across here and then we're gonna use these to make all three walls of the hut. And again, we'll do loads of spinning round to get the textures different. Uh, this is gonna be really, really cute when it's finished. Um, so that's the first side done. Copy this round for the other two sides. Need to freestyle a log to get it to match up between the two sides and join them together. So we'll put a couple of them here at this angle and that's gonna join the two sides together perfectly and look really nice. And then we'll leave the hut for a second because there's a couple of things I really need to do to get this habitat working and looking good. Firstly, we need to actually start attaching these logs to each other. They're not just balanced there. <laughs> They're actually um, attached. So we're gonna use the hinge piece as a big nail. Um, this is what it looks like in real life, just um, fairly large nails keeping the logs together, making sure they don't fall off. And then we're gonna put the actual arboreal feeding platform on top of the planks that we put in there so that the pandas have got a real place to eat, which means they will actually go up there and the keepers will actually put food on there. Now back to the hut, I noticed that there was a little trap door in the back of it when I was looking at the some of the photos I took, which I didn't notice when I was actually there because uh, it's on the, uh, the back of it. So we're gonna use some more hinges and these pieces from the twilight pack to make the the top of the door where it would fold down so that um, either the pandas can get in or out or probably more likely the keepers can access it more easily so um, nothing much more needs to be done there that looks really cute we'll put some more nails in here I just noticed these as I was pouring over the photos I took this is how the um, the hut is held together and then it's onto the roof so with the roof, I think in real life, I didn't get that close to this particular part of it. Uh, obviously it's fairly high up, but from what I could see and from looking at the videos that I shot while I was there, I think it's actually small pieces of wood that are lined up to look like um, a sort of a tile roof. Um, now we don't really have any appropriate wood pieces to do that with, but we do have some tile roofs from the Twilight Pack um, and I'm gonna use those and then we're gonna color them to match the color of the wood and we should be able to get a very similar effect to what they have in the Yorkshire Wildlife Park. Nice. Okay, I'm gonna speed things up a bit now and we're gonna take care of the rest of this climbing frame and take it all out into the rest of the habitat before we start building the rest of the habitat. So we got loads more of these logs. They actually come out of both sides, one side of the feeding platform that we've got here and then out of the little hut as well and go back on this way. They go back towards the sleeping quarters of the pandas, which we'll build in a second. That is uh, apparently not really used by them very much. They prefer to just sleep in the trees, but uh, you know, it's really cold or it's really raining, something like that, and they will go into their little hut. I think it's also a place for storage for food and things like that. Um, I didn't actually go inside it, uh, just saw the outside of it. On the left-hand side, 
the um, extra logs go away up to the trees and provide one of the ways for the pandas to get from the trees down to the hut and the feeding platform which you will see in a second. Speaking of the trees, let's get those in. If you're enjoying this video, by the way, please hit the like button and subscribe if you haven't already. There's a whole world of Planet Zoo videos on my channel to enjoy. Now with the trees, the key is to make sure that the pandas can climb the trees and then climb onto the logs and get onto all the climbing apparatus and the uh, feeding platform like they do in real life. So we're going to place the trees down and then connect the majority of them up with some of these logs and some more natural logs and branches and things like that that we will put down on the floor. Behind the trees, the ground is raised up here. This habitat actually sits in a sort of dell just a bit below the level of the ground around it. There's a big lake behind it. Um, so we're gonna raise the floor up here and then smooth it out, just make it look really natural. There we go. And then we'll move on to building the fences. So this habitat's actually got two fences, an inner one to keep the pandas in, and then an outer one to keep the guests away from the inner fence. Um, something that's quite common in zoos, a standoff barrier it's called. So I've already built the standoff barrier, that's really simple, but the barrier for the um, pandas is a bit more interesting, so I thought I'd show you that. So we've got the planks here, some more nails, and then we'll put some uh, wire mesh on the inside. What I particularly love about this fence though is the anti-climb barrier. So normally an anti-climb barrier you've got some metal coming off the top of the fence or maybe one of the really big round um, things, I don't really know what they're called, to stop them from climbing. But here they've literally just got strips of like, I think it's PVC, sort of like what you'd see at a church fete <laughs> or like in a, um, a car lot or something where you'd have a sign on it because pandas aren't the most agile. Um, they're very good climbers, but they don't do much in the way of jumping and things like that. And because they're so small, you can literally just put this along the middle of the fence. And even if they start climbing the mesh, as soon as they get to this, they can't get any purchase on it. And then that's it. You've uh, you've kept your pandas inside the habitat at the cost of about you know a pound <laughs> to do the entire fence, which is nice. And I think it's about time we took a look at where we've got to so far. So we're gonna sink a few plants and bushes and flowers into the ground as we always do on the channel to get a nice natural ground cover and then let's take a look at how things are shaping up because we are almost done with this build. This is already really looking like what it was like in the Yorkshire Wildlife Park. I'm very happy with this. All we basically need to do is get the sleeping quarters for the pandas in. Um, so we'll start building that here. And then we need to obviously actually turn this into a habitat, putting in all the null barriers and getting the pandas in. So let's get the house done. We've got um, a standard sort of wooden shed, bit of turf on the roof, and then some holes for the um, pandas to get in and out of the uh, shed. So we'll build that with some of the arctic wood and a few other wood pieces that go nicely with that. Don't have any panels small enough to build the, the little holes that they climb through, so we'll use these big arctic logs instead. There we go. And then we will fill in the rest of the walls, give it a nice base to sit on with this step from the tropical pack. Um, and then we will join it up with logs to the climbing frame that we've already got so that the pandas can get in and out of it. They actually, I don't know how, but they actually get in and out of this despite the <laughs> tiny size of those holes. Normally, if you want animals to get in and out of a building in Planet Zoo, you have to make the access way bigger than it is in real life. But I think they literally jump through these holes um, and then get onto the logs, which is pretty amazing. I think you'll see that in the end cinematics. So let's join the sleeping hut up with the main climbing frame. This habitat is really starting to come together now. That is looking good. We'll get the null barriers in so we can actually define this as a habitat. I've built a little airlock system there or whatever the real name for those is because that is definitely not an airlock, like a double door so that when the keepers go in and out um, and indeed when I went in and out, the pandas wouldn't escape. We'll put the keeper gate in there and we are pretty much done. One more thing to do, make sure that the keepers can access this feeder and we're gonna to need to put a rock in. That was the best way I could think of to do it, but that will get the keepers high enough to access the feeder, which means that these little guys can get onto the feeder and start eating and we will get the perfect recreation that we are looking for. Let's take a look. That is exactly what I wanted to see. I am really happy with how this turned out. I hope you guys think I did a good job of recreating the Yorkshire Wildlife Park. 
Thank you so much for watching, as always. I'll be back on Saturday with a new episode of San Bernardino Zoo. I'll leave you with a couple more shots of the habitat, and I'll see you soon. Bye.